Hello and welcome back to Disco Elysium. Last time we got this awesome hat, and we're exploring this bookstore which may have a curse. So I'm going to try and go into its back rooms and see if we can find out what's going on with the curse. Closed curtains. You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket daggle, uh, dangles from the curtains. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Um, shopkeeper, what is behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing books. She fiddles with her pendant. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. I'm going to pull the curtains. Pull open them. By examining the strange cage-like trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron, assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye socket stares at you. From the looks of it, this is a traditional uh, seminest ward, meant to provide protection against ill luck, bad dreams, curses, and other supernatural scourges. Who are the uh, Semenes? Inhabitants of the Ile de Fantôme, the Semenine Islands down, so uh, down south. Aside from poking at it suspiciously, there is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. I'm going to pull them open. Just as you're about to pull apart the curtains, the petrified voice of the shop owner cries out once more. Sir, please don't touch that. I told you it's off limits for the customers. Her hand has closed around her pendant, her fingers nervously playing with the talisman. A para... Parapsychologically speaking, if we're, if we're done, if you decide to open them, I won't be held responsible for the consequences. It's too dangerous. She looks away, mumbling. Why is everyone always messing with the curtains? Why can't they just buy books like normal people? Is this about the curse? Is that why you're afraid? No, it's just a storeroom for employees. I told you. Now please, step away from the curtains. She's almost begging you. Um... Well, madam, this is different. I'm a police officer and I need to get in there. Why? It's not like anyone was killed in there. She stops abruptly as her hand flies over her mouth, baffled by her own bluntness. I am sorry. I didn't mean to be so impolite. Just please don't go in there. You, I, I can't allow it. You only make things worse and unleash the powers. Um, okay. I don't care. You can't stop me. I'll open them. No! She raises her hand to try and stop you. Please, just talk to me, officer. Come here and let's talk this through before you decide to do anything extreme. Talking is always good. Go see what she has to say. There is something mysterious about the curtains. Be careful. I'm going to ignore them. I'm going to speak to her like she asked us to. Hello. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance and Biographies of Famous People. Why are you so uptight about those curtains? I just want to know what's on the other side. I already told you, it's just a storage area, f a storage room for employees. I don't understand why it's so important to you. Just let it go, officer. Go buy some goddamn books. You're supposed to be drawn to the books. Um, if it's just a storage room one, why does it have a Semenes ward uh, protecting it? It's just for decoration. She wavers under your gaze, mouth pressed into a tight-lipped smile, then something breaks. Okay, fine, it's because this place has been cursed. Just like everyone said, I, they don't call it the doomed commercial area for nothing. Are you happy now, officer? Happy you've ruined everything? She closes her eyes and starts mumbling something to her pendant. How does this curse manifest itself? A shiver runs through the woman as she looks around a dimly lit store. The curse is so much worse than you could imagine. It's a disease, eating at the very foundation. Her voice drops to a whisper. It's the curse of financial distress, of ruin and bankruptcy. She peers at the curtains again. Didn't that curtain just move? Ah, Annette mentioned the previous tenants have experienced some financial troubles. It's not just that, officer. We're dealing with something supernatural here. It's the... Caco demons, feeding off bad business practices and disappointing income statements. I can 
There's something wrong with this building, I can tell you. Ever since we arrived, I've sensed an eerie, lingering presence as if I was unwanted here. Why don't you just tell me right away about the curse? It's not good to talk about the curse, not in detail. The, neg uh, the negativism... She shivers. It's dangerous to talk about the void ra rates angers them. Wow, void rates. You have new words. Um, have you sought help from anyone? Yes, I've contracted numerous parapsychologists and even a pair of Seminese meditators. They provided me with the wards. Um, me uh, mediators, as should have been. Anyway, she nods at the strange cage-like trinket on the curtains. The wards help us to keep the doom at bay and protect us against the darkness that lies further in the building. Even though now I fear it is not enough. Is your pendant part of the wards as well? Her necklace? Oh, this! She holds the pendant in her palm. His ochre heart glistens under the lights. No, it's a special, uh, Himian amulet blessed by the desert pygmy shamans with a spell of compulsion. It's to compel people to buy books. There are numerous spells cast throughout the store. I had the books anointed with different inducement spell. With a different inducement spell, for example. She nods. It's guaranteed to boost sales 15%. Desert pygmy shamans? That sounds like a rather questionable way to describe a group of people. Um, Would you let me take the case? I could investigate, see if the curse is real. Most certainly not. I don't want anyone who's not familiar with the psychic arts to get involved in this mess. Stay away, leave the spirits be, so they can return to their slumber. My liege, you know what this case calls for? A paradetective. I have to convince her to let me investigate the doomed commercial area. And because we helped Annette, we got a positive on that one there. The plus two modifier. Slither up to her, you silver-tongued fiend. Sure, what a world-class uh, perfidy looks like. Ma'am, I came here to help. I've handled paranatural situations before. Are you sure? She looks sceptical. Don't think I haven't seen charlatans before. Um, I've returned from the void, a power detective from a long line of power detectives. You're no power detective, you look nothing like one, and you're clearly a drinker. Pardon me for being so blunt, but you look like one. Lieutenant keeps his usual stony calm. He silently picks out his notebook. Go ahead then, rock our world, he thinks. I'll compose some notes. Um... I admit I've had my share of drinks, but only because the spectral realm is parapsychologically taxing. How do you know all of this? Here we go. Um, your wards brought me here in the first place. The Seminese blood also runs through me. You're part Seminese. Oh, it means our meeting couldn't have been mere chance. The hands of fate guides us. But... I'm not the only one at risk. I have to think of my daughter. You're certain you can help us, keep us safe. I can't allow any collateral damage to hit us. Uh, just ask my partner, Kim. He'll vouch for me. Lieutenant has not been listening closely enough. Oh, L, he mumbles in minor confusion. You put him on the spot. Certainly so, madam. I can assure you my partner is an is eminent in this particular field. She, nuff, she shuffles nervously. If you promise, good officer, then... She pauses. You might be our last hope. Do you swear it? On my honor. Thank you, sir. A timid sigh of relief followed by a cautious smile. There's one more thing I haven't told you about yet. The entity. Do not act surprised. You know of these things, sire. Of course, the entity. For I have sensed its presence. You have, she gasps. The entity takes the form of a woman, a witch probably. I've suspected she must be connected to this curse ever since I first saw her. Do you know she lives inside the chimney? Aha, uh -huh. the chimney, the passage between heaven and hell, of course. Yes, that chimney is part of the building's central furnace and it's enormous. She has barricaded herself behind some metal security curtains. God knows what she's doing there. Some unnatural magic, I assume. She shivers. You should go find the entity and ask what's happened to all of the 
companies in the building on what is the source of the curse. Here's the key to the warded door behind the curtains. Take it. Oh, and please do return to me after you've looked around. I'm quite anxious to know what she has, has to say about the curse. What you discover in there. Unbelievable darkness and ruin. What did you discover? Probably just some office space. Don't be scared. Alright, farewell for now. How close are we to leveling up? We must be fairly close. Um, yeah, we're not close at all. Wait, do I have a skill point to spend? No. Okay. Well, time to go behind the curtains. You see a dimly lit room full of dusty furniture and trash. A doorway stands in the back, covered in dozens of scary little Seminese wards, your shadow looming over it like an omen. A small terrified, oh, it escapes from Plaisance as she tries her best to look away, her face, her round face buried in her hands. Okay. What have we got here? Ghostly silhouettes of hair dryers. A vaguely androgynous portrait of a man. Looks like Julien de Million, that hair poster. Um, oh, talk of that. I know we've already done this, but I just want to see how far away we were from a lonesome long way home. About four hours till we can work out where we live. Okay. An awarded door. A heavy door with missing handle stands before you, covered in dozens, if not hundreds, of Seminese trinkets and charms. Unlock the door with the key. As I'm going to knock first. Only an echo. No one is there. I'm not going to break it down. I'm just going to unlock it with the key. After exerting some force, you manage to turn the key. It's eerily silent. The door slides slightly open, letting a draft of cold air into the room. Go. Let's go in. Oh, wow. We're loading a new map? Okay. Oh, it's a gym. Oh, he wants to speak. What is this place? Lieutenant stares at the dusty training equipment. Looks like a gym to me. Yes, but no one's been here in ages. He draws a stripe on the dusty floor of his foot. I doubt the electricity still works. Good thing we have a flashlight on us. Don't forget to take it out your bag before we move on. An eerie feeling rises in your chest. What if there's a reason why no one's been here for ages? Yes, I believe that's because it's closed. No need to look for supernatural explanations when a banal one will do. Now let's move on, shall we? Okay. Sand is dripping from a punch bag. Ooh, what we got here? We have a shot put ball. It is worth about four real. It's more money than we've had. Poster says Citrus Fortis. The rest is worn off. Worn out uh, wall bars. They look unsafe. I've got to try, right? A barbell uh, lies on the floor. The color has worn off its weighted its weight plates. It's 60 kilograms. Your triceps hum at the sight of these weights. Show the world what kind of beast it's dealing with. List them. There are no collars on the barbell. This is a safety hazard. Why does it feel so familiar? Well, I can't lift it because I have no physical strength. Um, look, Kim, it's a trap. There are no collars on the barbell. You're right. The weights may fall off. Better not touch it then. Um, what kind of bastard would just remove the collars? It should be a felony. It would be a violation of the EPIS safety regulations if the gym was still operating. But it isn't. No one's supposed to come here anymore. Because I noticed the collars, I get plus one, but it's still awful. Is this familiar because I'm a weightlifter? No, it's not that. It's the stale smell of rubber and the squeaky sound of sneakers. You bruise knee against a mat and a whistle. Then the feeling is gone. It's just a memory. A memory from another life, when you were young and fit. Alright, I'm not going to lift it, because I can't lift it, and I don't want to lower my health from trying. Right. Let's go up the stairs. The hallway is blocked by old window panes and debris. He wants to speak again. 
It's dark. Lieutenant states the obvious. And the flashlight works a lot better if you hold it in your hand. Flashlights go in hand? I'm going to stare at my hand uncomprehendingly. Yes, the lieutenant says. You might even call it the feature of the universe that you need to hold tools to use them. That makes no sense at all. Lieutenant frowns. I am sorry the fundamental laws of the universe don't seem to agree with you, detective. But the fact remains, it's too dark to see in here without the flashlight. So come on, we've got the work to do. Some areas are inaccessible without equipping your flashlight. Go to your inventory and equip it. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, a ball used for playing shot putt. You feel like you should hold onto this and make good use of it. To sell such a beautiful old sports, uh, school sports equipment would be a sin. Of course it would. Well, let's put it in this hand. I don't need the chain cutters right now. Nice. So now I have my torch. That's okay. It's a little creepy. A large demijohn full of strange, strange liquid. Wild animals stare at you in the dark, stuffed and mounted. Oh, that was creepy. These people. Don't like that it's saved either. Airship brooters covered in spider webs. They remind you of blades. A naked mannequin torso, a strange uh, yellow color. But where are the clothes it used to display? Money! I'm in. Blue velvet, soft to the touch, moth bitten. More money in here? Oh, I'll take all the money. This is the jackpot. We've got five real. Okay, so that leads somewhere else. What's up with this? Is that... An elf? An orc? It's an orc with a beard. And a sword. What's up with that? Were they playing D&D? Project Dreadboard. Your flashlight slides over an old green chalkboard covered in scribbles, sketches, and schemes like some ancient cave mural. Some writings have faded with age, but you can still make out sections here and there. Uh, photos and drawings have been pinned to the board. Let's inspect the drawings. These lithe, pointy-eared creatures appear to be in different types of welkins. Make out autumnal uh, candle welkins casting wax-based magic. Translucent welkins with organs shining under their skin and even aether welkins hailing from the vast emptiness of the sidereal space. Who are all these creatures? Fantasies of a tortured, feverish mind? You should adopt one of those welkins as your persona. No longer a mere man, but a welkin. One of the welkins, towering above the rest, appears to be different, however. I'm going to examine them. Seem this uh, is important. It's a... Varaham Mira. A high welkin. His face is white and scarred like, a cracked, like cracked marble. This, clearly, this is clearly a welkin supremacist. The note says, All non-welkin races will be purged. The Huldur, uh, the Dwerg, the humans, and even the headless men, all of them purged. Imagine a world filled only with Welkin, Green Welkin, Dread Welkin, and the High Welkin to rule them all. Lieutenant can't help but comment. An inordinate amount of time has gone to drawing these little Welkin creatures. Why would anyone spend so much time on this? Some people really like building a world, I think, even if it's just for a game. Uh-huh, a little bit meta. Who are these creatures? Who drew them? Are they real? I have so many questions. This looks like concept art for a project. It's not really real. Um, one of them is a Welkin supremacist. Hmm, political commentary. That one has a great beard, too. Kim nods at the Welkin's facial hair. Well, this has been educational. Let's move on from Wel the Welkins. Just look at those details. So much effort. I'm going to inspect the photos. The photo collage depicts barren, icy landscapes wrapped in perpetual night. You see permafrost and glacial landforms, dead trees groaning under the snow. Entire oceans have been frozen from shore to shore. 
There are pictures of settlements on dried up riverbeds abandoned in a storm, animal corpses in the dark, carcasses and bones. You see, primitive oil rigs built into glaciers by boreal dwarg yurts under the snow, great mammoth-like beasts of burden. Albeit dark and cold, this vision also feels cosy in its own way, like eggnog or morphine, a much needed respite from our own world. A pinned postcard reads, The heat death scenario, a desperate fight for geothermal energy engulfs the world as the world become untethered from its sun, drifting to through the universe. What I'm wondering for these, I was just kind of thinking about all these successes we're getting on these. I wonder whether it tells you if you fail or whether it just doesn't give you any information. I assume it just doesn't give you any information. Like, if you know nothing, you know nothing. It just doesn't tell you. Maybe that's where we get so many encyclopedia ones? Possibly. Anyway, I'm going to inspect the schedule. This is a monthly calendar from the year 50. Cryptic words like sprint, uh, daily minimum, and GPI span the marker-drawn grid, the grand scheme of production and money. Min... Uh, Mininim... Uh, Mini-me stands for mini-meeting. It's part of a bigger framework for managing work called RUN. Station 41 tried to implement it a few years ago, but failed. Uh-huh. Uh, so they're doing... Let me just have a look here. Uh, this would be agile. They're doing agile development. Okay. Uh, keep reading. What happened? As time goes on, the numbers in the boxes grow rarer and rarer. The board becomes an empty snowfield in the final days. Only failures and regret dwell in this region. Lieutenant looks at the frigid ice field of nothingness and concludes, Looks like they didn't make it. A note on the bottom left-hand corner of the chalkboard says, See the production schedule filament for details. I'm going to inspect the notes. The handwriting is only partially legible, but you can still make out three slogans. Call in, tune out. We're all untethered and heat death of the universe. Alright. We'll leave it alone then. What have we got here? More money? Mainframe. This appears to be in some kind of machine with a cube-shaped heart and a wired framework. The keyboard has a rectangular on-off button. A piece of paper still hangs from the printer. A radio computer, says the lieutenant, watching you circle around the machine. Just sitting here without anyone in sight. He sounds surprised and a bit cautious. This is the REM Civic radio computer, model RC5120, equipped with a Feld mainframe and a REM compatible printer. You think I should turn it on? You know what? I'm just going to turn it on. The machine lights up like some prehistoric animal stirring from its slumber, revealing a vericent play and print keys on the keyboard. The hatch on the machine's central compartment is wide open. I'm going to look inside the compartment. It's empty like a beehive without its brood. Some cables have been left tangling, disconnected. This is where the memory should go? The lieutenant notes, observing the machine. I'm going to press play. Nothing happens. Something's missing. There's no tape in the player. Press it again. Nothing happens. I'm going to press print. Nothing happens. I'm going to leave. Okay, so we need to find a tape to go in there. A map? Frequency fireplace. This old fireplace is covered in lines drawn in blue and red marker. The mesh spreading all over the stone like blood vessels on an alabaster skin. It looks ghostly and strangely ancient. The whole thing resembles credin mosaic tiles. Very, uh, pisontic. Um, hold on, how do I know what Kedrin mosaic tiles are supposed to look like? History class. Students with their textbooks open, studying the roots of our civilization. These aquabelle blue tiles looked beautiful in the sun. What am I looking at? Radio frequencies, it seems. UKV 123.6, UKV 123.7, UKV 1.23.9. Some written, no, written notes too, sparse and cryptic. Radio frequencies for what? Unclear, it looks like um, a, cash, a cardiovascular system split into veins and, and caliparies. Very advanced. We're dealing with something medical here? You think so? The web is comprised of radio stations. All leads back to one red heart titled The Game Master. Frequency, a note says, This one can listen in on any station at once? They must have had a massive air width. These things don't come cheap. Wait, who's the Game Master? 
someone very important. The leader of a massive on-air game built by these people. A conductor for hundreds of story threads that pass through the game master's frequency. If it's game, then who's playing? Whoever decides to call in to a call-in station, it looks like. There's no way a little basement studio working here could pull anything like this off. My god. Lieutenant leans in close to his finger, tracking the maddening rhizome. It's as if the less money they had, the more ambitious their project became. Why do you say that? The schedule. He nods at the calendar on the chalkboard, wiping his marker-stained fingers clean. I know doom when I see it. The company was running out of funding. What else? Squint at lines. Nothing. It's just lines on marble. An echo from times long gone. No one has used the fireplace in ages. Okay. Interesting. What have we got here? Scribbled across a notebook. Developers of the most advanced RPG in the universe. And then a door. Okay. What do you think is going on with that computer, chalkboard, and fireplace? Um... Well... It's just a failed business. The only question is, what the hell were they making? Yes, that is the question. The lieutenant takes a step back, steepling his hands. I also understand that I completely misjudged his accent the first time I heard it, but you know what? I'm not changing. Consistency is important, and we're sticking with uh, my canon rather than the game's canon for his voice. Like he's ready to lay out a fine theory, crafted together like a puzzle box. It looks like one of those popular pen and paper role-playing games. Only those people were trying to automate it, make it work on a radio computers. Utter madness, he thinks. As a compliment. Are they planning to do that? Through call-in stations? He nods at the fireplace. None of these players would have to be physically present. Anyone in the world can participate in the game as long as they have a two-way radio. Then there's the game master frequency that listens in on all the smaller call-in stations. I think that was supposed to coordinate the stories. Functioning as a master of ceremonies of sorts. Coordinating so many games would take a whole switchboard of people, possibly divided into sub-frequencies. The one thing I had thought though was Kim wasn't going to be a long-term character. But, I don't know, maybe he's not meant to be a long-term character. But he's been with us long enough. Uh, has anyone ever done this before? Although I suppose by long enough I mean... He's been with us since about 9 o'clock, so, um, 7 hours or so. Has anyone ever done this before? Not to my knowledge. They make automated games in Grad, Messena, uh, Kogenstein, you know, places with industry. Not in the Rev uh, not in Revachal, West, among the ruins. I don't, I don't think anyone has attempted to create an intersolary game before. We just don't have the technology. And this was a role-playing game. Indeed, these Welkins are a dead giveaway. He points to the chalkboard. Role-playing people love that stuff. The world looks like a modified version of the world board game with the heat death thrown in. Super cool. Somebody should give them millions of riel immediately. This game is too good to be left unfinished. What do you think happened to the company? No idea. They stopped filling out the schedule in the chalkboard. Wow. Indeed, he's ambitious and untethered from reality, but the lieutenant tilts his head, thinking. Um. Well. Uh. The world is cold and lonely. This would keep it company. Let's finish it. A half smile breaks out on his face. It is too late for that, I'm afraid. He says, looking around at the derelict room, the pipes howl and a rat crosses the floor. Okay, he concludes. Let's keep moving. Okay, so we're not quite done here yet, then. Because if that was allowing us to leave the room, I want to continue having a look around. What have we got back here? Steel rotor blades bearing the Slipstream logo. We have production schedule filament memory. Oh, we'll take that. And skis with slipstream painted on the laminated top label. Looks like someone has tried to reconceptualize their business here. I don't get it. Look, the skis and the rotor blades both bear the name slipstream logo. Uh, the same slipstream logo. It seems likely they started making one, failed to turn a profit, then pivoted to producing the other. 
Um, but the question is, which did they start with and which did they pivot to? That's a good question. Um, what a strange leap of imagination, and yet they still failed. How sad. Finished thought. Reality is ruthless. Did that unlock a new dot? Not quite. Okay. So we now have the cube of crisscross of filaments feels oddly fragile in your hand. It's intricate structure covered in dust. Silver tape on the side reads, production schedule. Note, this filament contains information that can be read using a radio computer. Oh, okay. Let's go and have a look at the computer then, right? Insert the production schedule. Looks like a smooth drawer, the filament slides into place. On the keyboard, the play button starts blinking. Uh, press play again. A bar of fabric right under the keyboard starts producing a soft hum. The sound of static seeps through the machine's planar magnetic driver. Have you stirred the ghost of the doomed commercial area from its rest? Could this be the dismembered heart beginning to flutter? The static gets louder, loud and slower, filling up the abandoned hall until a voice speaks out, crackling and old, cutting into the air. Good afternoon. Fortress accident on Rue St. Gislain. This is East Insulidean. Repeater station 1. Please repeat. Is this the production schedule? What's the production schedule? The filament you have inserted into the reader. Ah, thanks for the explanation. That was a question. Have you inserted it into the core? Yes. Good. Please repeat the password. Password. Of course it would have a password. That's why there was a human administrator involved. Um, a password? I'm really bad at passwords. Can you give me a hint? No. A hint system is not part of the protocol for repeater stations. Is it my birthday? Still no. This is the police. Please open this thing. The voice recites, I am contractually obliged to protect the privacy of the filament holder fortress accident without filling, filing a warrant with Lintel. I cannot give you access to this filament. I'm afraid we are not doing that unless we want to wait for a month. Now, can you please repeat the password? The voice in the machine asks again. She sounds cold in the damp air. I don't know the password. Received. I will register this login attempt. Don't worry, passwords have a way of turning up sooner or later. Um, Why did you call me Fortress Accident? Fortress Accident is the company on whose name the terminal you're currently using has been registered to. Do you have any other information about this company? One moment. You hear her flip through the catalogue before she reads out with studious care. Fortress Accident, SCA, produces revolutionary interactive call-in radio games. That's what the catalogue says. That's not bad. Um, wow, so conceptual. Hmm. So what's th that, this interactive call-on radio play? The static grounds out her response. Any other questions you hear when the connection finally improves? Um... What are you, a machine or are you alive? Yes, I am alive. I'm 74 years old and my name is Yvonne. Lieutenant whispers into your ear. She repeats passwords. Programming people are all paranoid. Um. Okay. Okay, but where are you? How did you know where I am? I work as a repeater at the East Insulindian repeater station. It's my job to know where you are, Fortress Accident. As for me, well, some static. I am sitting in my cubicle that's surrounded by a wall of radios. Now please tell me if there's anything else I can do for you, Fortress Accident. Let's just have a look at the password stuff. I don't know the password. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank you and goodbye. The old lady's voice disappears along with the static. Okay, let's leave for a second. Maybe one of these has a password. Now that's what I'm looking for. Um, no, okay. It doesn't look like they're going to have that there unless it's like heat death or something. Let's stay in the same building and go upstairs. What's this? Safety curtains. 
An iron safety curtain curves before your eyes, folded like bellows. It covers half the room, blocking the way into the colossal industrial chimney. This must be where the entity lives. Knock on it. One odd thing to do, nothing happens. Knock on it harder. Still nothing, nobody's home. Even harder. These curtains prove to be surprisingly sturdy. Your fist hurts now. If this really is an entrance to the chimney, then there must be a furnace somewhere as well. Maybe there's another way to get in. Can you please try to refrain from attacking random things? Um... Well, this is not random, this is significant. I want to see what's on the other side. Why do you think is necessarily something on the other side? The lieutenant asks, but you can see a spark of curiosity in his eyes. In any case, there's no way we can get in right now. Let's investigate further. Okay. Over here, over here. Shoes in a puddle of melting snow. Oh, and some cans. Postcard La Delta 51. Okay. What's up with that? Um, it's in here. That's where it is. The sunlight has made this postcard almost completely sepia-toned. Midtown traffic passes. Overhead, the ghosts of skyscrapers disappear into beige midday mist. Vapors rising from the delta on which the district was built. This postcard is prepaid. Okay, maybe I can sell it. Um, uh, right. Head further in here. Try to see whether I could just click and hold down to get us to move there. Nothing in this corner. Um, okay, how about this way? Anything in here? No, nothing new. The only one I haven't tried here on this one is print. Nothing happens. I probably need the password to pass that one. Okay. Let's head downstairs. I think it's downstairs anyway. We could be heading anywhere. I'm not entirely sure. That's a bear. Okay. Uh, what's this? Morale. Nice. And then two more real. Hey, we only need like another hundred and we can pay our rent for the night. That's a fridge bear. Okay, well. Ice bear fridge. You see a terrifying ice bear with a strange compartment in its belly. The dork is covered in frost and the bear's eyes are glowing red. The bear looks oddly realistic. Is it taxidermy? What is this thing? It looks like a giant ice bear. Lieutenant doesn't answer. His eyes are glued to the animal. A sharp slice of light shines out from its mysterious belly door. They crack it open. A gust of freezing cold air rushes to greet you. You hear a low grumble as the bear uh, regulates itself. This is the inside of, of a refrigerator. Lieutenant takes a peek inside. His hands have found the holster of his gun. Relax, Kim. It's a fridge. Of course, just a giant dice bear shaped fridge. He relaxes his hand, his face bathed in the harsh light of the open fridge door. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, let's take a look inside. The shelves are empty. All you see are crumpled ice cream wrappers with the brand name Revachol Ice City. A handwritten note has been attached to the door. The fridge is huge. Let's take the note. You pocket the note and the little fridge magnets keeping it on the door. I'm examining one of the ice cream wrappers in there. A friendly cartoon bear smells back at you from a glossy cellophane wrapper. It looks nothing like the fridge. What's the giant bear-shaped fridge doing in an abandoned cellar in the first place? A good question. It looks like an ice cream fridge. The lieutenant reaches for one of the wrappers. He studies it in a light. So they tried to sell ice cream from this uh, hyper carnivore? I know. The lieutenant uh, says, Lieutenant, what an unfortunate marketing choice. What is even worse, the bear is still costing them money to this day. The lieutenant points at the red uh, uh, snaky cable running from the fridge. The fridge buzzes with energy. The electricity bill on this thing must be catastrophic. I'll close the door. I mean, I don't want to make it any worse, do I? Alright, what have we got? We got the note. A handwritten note you found in the gi giant ice bear fridge. It still bears some marks from the fruit-shaped kitchen magnets that were used to secure it to the refrigerator door. The note is written with a blue pencil on a piece of 
lined office paper. The kitchen magnets have left spots on its surface. Does it say anything interesting? Lieutenant leans closer to read the crumpled note over your shoulder. This is tangential at best, but the lieutenant's detective instinct is still active. I'm going to read the note. Someone has scribbled, S, I can't believe the off-site copy is still here. The illiterate ginger kid keeps stealing stuff from the studio, so I hid it somewhere safe. Oh, so that must be, um... Uh... I've completely forgotten the name, but the kid next to the, um, dead body. Uh, you'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream marker. Please take it home ASAP. It's important. I'd do it myself if I lived in a civilized place with a freezer. Take care. Sulislaw. Or Sul Sulislav. I think that's going to be Slav. Anyway. Um, so you'll find the filament memory with the off-site copy in the frozen ice cream maker. That's fine. wonder who wrote that note. It looks like someone from that radio game company upstairs. I'm a little surprised they just left their property lying here. Maybe they had to leave in a hurry. That's a plausible hypothesis. Uh, remind me again, what's a filament memory? It belongs inside the radio computer, storing its memory like a tape. You listen to disco tapes, right? It's like one of your disco tapes, only for a computer. Who's the illiterate uh, ginger kid? Really? The lieutenant looks at you. Um, the corner of his mouth curved into a smug grin. You don't have a single guess? You mean Kuno? Oh, I'm sure that child would love to get his hands on a filament memory. Even if he doesn't know what to do with it, he'd probably try to pawn it for speed based on our encounter. Do you have any idea where the frozen ice cream maker could be? I don't know. I assume it's somewhere close to the ice bear fridge. Well, let's put the note away. Okay. How could I forget Kuno? Right, what have we got here? Ice cream maker defrosted and unplugged. There, is that what I'm looking for? The flashlight cast the strange shadow. There is a hidden doorway here. Oh, okay. What have we got? We've got some pipes. Two rusty rifles are hidden above the piping. They look inoperable. Someone has stuck some uh, busted guns beneath the ceiling. And here? A hole in the wall. A few bricks have fallen off, revealing a compartment behind the wall. It's too dark to see in. Uh, I'm going to shine some light on the hidden compartment. Um, looks like there's a hole in the wall. Yes, there is. There also appears to be something inside the hole. Interesting. Do you want to take a look? Okay. Your hand reaches deep into the darkness and spider webs rummaging around. You find rusty rifles hidden away. Rifles, Kim! Lieutenant steps closer. Curious. Are these any good? Let's inspect them. Most of them are rusty and inoperable like the rest, but one catches your eye. A bolt-action model with a fine wood stock, in better cosmetic order than the others. This one looks nice. An old Belma grave from the Revolution. The uh, lieutenant nods with, uh, notes with approval. His eyes are gleaming. Seems to no longer be functional, but still a beautiful thing in its own way. Um... Where are we? Seems to be an old bunker from the revolutionary period. Look at all these rifles. He points up at the rifles under the ceiling. It must be an old weapons cache. Uh, what does this mean, a rifle here? It means there are firearms, albeit inoperable, still lying around the Martinez. It's an interesting coincidence, I would say. Might come in useful in the future. He likes this find. Cool. Let's leave. So we now have a rifle. We do. A broken bell uh, my grave from ages past. It's four shot, bolt action military rifle with a wooden frame. I can't use I can't hold it in my cry bar uh, my pry bar slot. That's just disappointing, isn't it? I was also wondering, yeah, we don't have an yes. inventory for him. That's fine. Just want to check. We we are who we are. We don't can really control him in any way. Okay, good to know. A frozen ice cream maker that's still running. Oh, okay. That must have our thing in it. Um, I can try and crack open the lid. 
This orange ice cream maker is buzzing like an old submarine. It has a hand cranked ice cream churner on top and an electric freezer that appears to be frozen shut. I'm going to turn the ice cream crank. Turning the crank feels oddly satisfying, like stirring your childhood dreams. Uh, in the distance, you hear water dripping. It's all gone now. You'll never become a poet or an entrepreneur. My prior bar is not strong enough to open the lid. Okay. I could possibly do it, but probably won't. Money and... Oh, something that gets more health. Nice, so we've got some backup health now. At last. Breaker box. Two uh, cables are plugged into the breaker box. The red one leads to the ice bear fridge and the black one to the ice cream maker nearby. Leave it for just now. I don't know what the consequences are. That's a way out. Uh, insane mesh tank top. Oh, I've got to. Also, um, let's have a look. Where did you even get this? No, really. Who put that in a drawer? No further comments. We're at your own risk. So this would be a shirt. So we'd lo lose conceptualization, but gain some suggestion. And we gain drama. Okay, well, what's drama do for us? Have I read drama yet? No. Cool for undercover cops, thespians of the stage, psychopaths. Drama urges you to treat the world as a stage and on it to perform. It enables you to lie, to concoct the most elaborate and wonderful stories, to take on ingenious personas and perform acts of stagecraft in an entertaining amalgam of forebury and deceit. Well, it, it, as well, it enables you to see through would-be actors and their false antics. If they lie, you'll know immediately. At high levels, drama may render you an insufferable thespian, one prone to hysterics and bouts of paranoia. For to know the world is a stage is to know that truth is a vanity. However, with low drama, you cannot lie. Or discern when others lie. A cop who can't do either is a cop who's soon going to be lying six feet under. Okay. Oh, and this pretty much confirms, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, what I was... Uh, where was it? I was thinking that... Uh, our, we were getting a lot of conceptualization. That was it. We are getting a lot of conceptualization things. But it must be because we have extra conceptualization. So the higher your stat is, the more likely you are to get one of those. So it must be hidden rolls in the background. I am, of course, going to wear it. Why wouldn't I? I need to take the jacket off a second. Oh, that's 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 a look. That's definitely a look. I don't know if it's a good look, but it's a look. Right. Oh, what have we got up here? Intercom wires running th into the breaker box. All right, I want to head all the way around. The wall collapsed, it's inaccessible now. And then we got the chimney. Or the furnace. A thick layer of coal dust covers the furnace, colouring it pitch black. It looks like this furnace has a face, and it's a face of agony. Kim, what is this thing? Is it a furnace? It looks like it. It looks like an old central furnace used to heat the building. It's connected to the chimney. He opens the door and gingerly peeks inside. No one has used it in ages. No signs of any recent fire or any dead rats. Okay, let's look inside. It's dark and grimy in here. In the darkness, you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. A voice or several voices talking to each other. Near the smoke chamber upstairs. What are you doing? The lieutenant asks when he sees you climb halfway inside the furnace. Um, I'm not sure, Kim. But I think I can hear someone talking upstairs. Wait, really? He looks up the ceiling. Maybe it's coming from behind those safety curtains we saw upstairs. I can yell, hello. Um, those voices I heard. Maybe it's the malignant entity. Uh, Plaisant said it lives in the chimney. A lush layer of coal now covers your skin. Sinking into the wrinkles, your hand looks ancient. Oh, I guess I smeared my hands with coal. That wasn't what I meant to do. I meant to do this one. You're right, the rooms do look like they're connected, but the malignant entities don't exist, at least not the supernatural kind. Always has to be a skeptic, this man. I'm going to kick it with my foot. I deserve that. My toe hurts. Oh, now I've kicked it. I get a bonus on this one. Alright, I'm going to yell hello into the furnace. 50-50. I didn't lose health. That's good. I, you know what? I should probably just use the health charge. You muster all your strength and yell... <laughs> Your de dehydrated, hungover throat can produce little more than a dry croak. 
A lifetime of smoking and drinking will do that to you. The chatter from the chimney continues on as before. You have made no impression on whatever's up there. Then again, maybe it's worth actually trying something up there. Hmm, maybe you should try to let the voice of vest officer. Let's try again later. Okay. I can't do that anymore. So what did my notes say again? Uh, notes. So... Uh, I've hidden it in the ice cream maker. Maybe if I turn off the ice cream maker, I can then open it? Black cable. Something close to you dies with a soft electric purr. Why did you do that? Um, it's black, not like it's the red one. Lieutenant raises his brows, then doesn't say anything. The electrical disturbance uh, distribution board now has one cable missing. I still can't crack it. Oh, now it's unplugged. It's easier to do it, but it's still a 3%, which means... Oh, it's because I got a minus 20. I need something stronger. Okay. That's fine. Let's head up these stairs. Figure out where we're going here. I'm still not entirely sure what we're doing, but that's okay. We're getting closer to something, I'm sure. And then we're outside, so now we can head back in whenever I want to. Alright, well, the only thing I want to do now is go and speak to Kuno. Wait, is there more here? There probably isn't more there. I want to go speak to Kuno. Hey, Kuno. Uh, yeah, I'm off. So nothing there, huh? Okay. Uh, maybe if I look at the former company, so I'll get something. Um. Oh wow. Okay. Do we have more than last time? Uh, slipstream CSA C uh, SCA. Is that it? That's probably it, right? Oh no, it's Fortress Accident A SCA. Silence, nobody's at home at Fortress Accident. Nobody's at home at any of those. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, empty card? This button looks new, but someone has removed the card name. Nothing happens when you try to ring it. Hmm, this button looks new? Probably not connected yet. He takes a step back, inspecting the other names in the list. Um... Pepperoni's taxi was the, the broken down bit. I try Ice City. Okay, that's just nothing because it makes a horrible noise. Right, well, I'm going to end the episode there. Thank you for watching. We have eight real, so we're in a good situation. Oh, I can probably put away the torch now. We don't really need it. That's fine. Um, and then I think we need to go speak to the members of the union who are in here. Uh, but yeah, I'm not really sure what we're doing but that's all right it's all an experience and i'm enjoying every minute of it thank you for watching see you next time goodbye